The 2014 Victorian Private and Corporate Sector Award winner is Tracy Brown. <sighs> okay. Um, we can take a breath and actually take a mental snapshot because this is a pretty special night. <sighs> you know, until last night, I actually didn't plan even writing a speech. And thank you to this lovely lady who convinced me last night. I went away and really thought about the awards. And I realised that I was in such a, an accomplished group of ladies that I feel that we were just lucky, I'm very lucky tonight to have actually been the pick because any of you ladies could have won. So I really would like to acknowledge all of you, you're quite amazing. The award process in itself has been a great journey and rewarding as well because I really would like to thank Telstra for the opportunity to participate and also for supporting and motivating women to shine. That is so important for any woman out there who's had to actually go out and try and get ahead in the corporate sector. It can be quite difficult, and Telstra really helps motivate women to do that. So as a working mum, you tend to just try and get through every day, and you really don't take a minute to have a breath or to really appreciate those really special, quick little moments. But through this award process, all the women I've met have said, hang on, slow down, just really enjoy the, what's going on and take that breath. And because of that, I actually have, and I'm really savouring the moment. Thank you. So, <laughs> okay. So, to start off with, I'd like to thank Table 38, my cheese squad. Go, guys! <laughs> that is AKA family and also work colleagues and friends, and my beautiful daughter, Juliet, and son, Charles, who are leading the cheese squad. Thanks, guys, for coming tonight. I've never really, um, so I've never really, We've been in a position to accept this award without my team, and I really do want to thank them tonight, of which there are quite a few people sitting at table 38. The guys at Alchemia are amazing, and working with people like Jenny, Vera, men, I had to write it down because I didn't want to miss anyone out, Jeanette, Samara, Steve, Mike, Ash, Ivana and Bree, and many others over the years. It really has made a very difficult job into a pleasure. I dedicate this award to you and the countless long nights of working through just being focused on getting our anti-cancer drugs into man and also, more importantly, for believing in me and my stupid ideas. Now, that's a big thing. Thanks for that. Uh, just a little bit about myself. Uh, so I started my career 30 years ago as an academic researcher. And at that time, they really instilled in scientists that you had to be altruistic and you really, money was a dirty word. You could not think about making money out of science. So if you asked me when I started my career if I would actually ever stand up in front of a group of people such as yourselves accepting an award for business, I would have said you're eating mushrooms, most likely magic mushrooms, because it just wouldn't have happened. So my transition from academic researcher to corporate drug developer started when I lost my mother at quite an early age to cancer. And seeing firsthand the horrible side effects that often make cancer sufferers think that cancer is better than the therapy I decided that we really needed to start developing better anti-cancer therapies. It really ignited a flame within me. So I made at that time my plight to develop less toxic and more effective anti-cancer therapies so families wouldn't have to watch and experience someone they love wasting away to this horrible disease. So being an academic, I drew upon my research experience and came up with the concept where I thought, you know, if we can take something that's non-toxic, has a really high affinity for tumour cells, and we can load it in with drugs that are currently used and therefore target those drugs to tumours, we might have a therapy that is more effective but also reduces side effects. And I started thinking about this and came up with the concept. The next thing was to get money. Now, as an academic, you're never really taught how to do that. You go to the government, you ask for money, they say no, you just sort of leave it at that. And sure enough, I went to so many different government organisations and they said, mm, not a bad concept, but I just don't think your idea is going to work. And that was pretty tough, I was 15 years ago, I was a lot younger than I am now. And so at that point, in those really low moments, I always felt that my mum was sitting on my shoulder, acting like my guardian angel, saying, don't let them stop you, go ahead and do that, you really have to go on. And so through that spontaneous thought of, mum, I'm doing this for you, it really spurred me on. And I decided to try and make money in a way that it wasn't dirty. And the pharmaceutical industry, it's often considered that way. But I went out and I found investors. 
And what amazed me, there were so many people who'd been touched by cancer during their life that it wasn't such a difficult objective to get enough money to start going. I then vended my uh, technology to a small biotech company called Meditech Research. And I was such a newbie. I'll never forget the first meeting I, I had the CEO. He said, well, girl, because he's a Western Australian mine, I was always a girl, you need to go out there and do investment roadshow. I had no idea what that was, but I said, sure, I can do that. And so on the first day of my roadshow, share price was six cents, and I put a really sciencey presentation together, and I went in there in front of all these stockbrokers, and I said, um, you know, started getting into it, and halfway through, they started walking out. And this was only probably about five or six minutes into the presentation. And I thought, damn, you know what, I'm never ever going to have a go at this, because I've bored these guys silly. I didn't realise they were walking out to buy shares. Within the um, first week, share price is 24 cents, and it then got to $1.20 within about a six month period. At that point, it made it possible to get my drugs into man. And so within a three year period, my team and I, which I put together with really focused, dedicated people, were able to get three drugs into man. And what I actually um, found by working with Meditech Research was that a small team who's focused and dedicated is all that you need. And in 2006, uh, Alchemia recognised Medtech Research as an excellent merger partner, and we became the first merged by tech company, and that went down exceptionally well with shareholders, which meant we could raise more money to get my drugs further into clinical trials. But this month, sorry, I need some water, sorry. Um, this month is a really big month. The reason being is that um, I have you can tell I did not expect to win this award tonight. Um, so it's really a big month. First, the Telstra Women Awards, but also after 15 years of work, my lead candidate is actually going to um, finish its phase three clinical trial. So by the end of this month, I'll know if my first drug has actually worked. So, yeah. And now to get all businessy, because it is the Business of Women Awards, uh, we've actually projected for the Australian economy, if successful, this drug can actually have an annual income of approximately half a billion dollars. And the, tech and the technology that I actually developed is a platform technology, which means this is only one drug of many potential drugs in the pipeline. So what have I learned through this whole process? Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. So what have I actually learned through this process? A lot of valuable lessons. And I had to write this down so I wouldn't forget some of them. Uh, so the transition from academic to a commercial drug developer makes me sound pretty cool, like someone out of Breaking Bad, actually. I quite like that. Um, <laughs> so you always have to show passion because it's contagious. If you, it's like a good laugh. If someone else laughs, you're just going to have to break down with them because it's the way that it goes. Value the people that share and support your silly ideas and vision. That is so important to find like-minded people. I've also been fortunate with Alchemy shareholders. And biotech is a very expensive business that goes on for a long time. And so you need to develop very strong relationships with long-standing shareholders. And at Alchemy, we've been really lucky. We've had a lot of patient and passionate people invest in our company. And hopefully, guys, you're going to get your money back soon. I'm really hoping. <laughs> Um, and also, always remember that no one has a monopoly on being right, so many ideas instead of, and many heads put together is really the way to go. And don't let people tell you that something won't work and it isn't achievable, because you know what? Nothing is not achievable. You can go ahead and you can achieve whatever you want to if you just focus and believe in yourself. And that is so important. And as I said, find like-minded people. And for me, that is someone who likes to go down the pub, have a really boozy night, and listen to some good music. And I found them on table 38. Yay! <laughs> okay. So I'm almost finished. Um, so through the Telstra Awards, I feel very privileged that I'll be able to meet a lot of established businesswomen, upcoming businesswomen, where the younger woman that I hope to meet, I'm sure they'll be all inspirational, I just want to be able to give them some experience in my school of hard knocks, because I've had no idea what I was doing at the start. If I did, it would have, I don't know if I would have even started the process. I just got in there and did it. And that comes down to something my, that my mother taught me. She taught me a really valuable lesson and instilled in me a strong belief in my own self-worth. She taught me that you can achieve anything if you focus, you work hard, 
and you are determined. And that's a theme that's really come across tonight. So to use her Northern English expression, who died and made you queen? Get in there and do some work <laughs> um, and get it done. That was pretty much my mum's attitude. So I'd like to thank, finally, my wonderful family, Dad, my surrogate mum, Dimna, um, Gary and his lovely partner, Lynette, and my gorgeous sister, Joanne, who couldn't make it tonight. Getting here would have never happened without the love of my husband and my three gorgeous children, Robert, Charles and Juliet. Thank you, my little angels, for those countless nights when I got home late and you tried to stay awake so I could read you a bedtime story. You know the book, don't you? Guess how much I love you? <laughs> I read it now and I always burst into tears, but anyway. Um, and so I think that without your love and support, this would never have been possible. And your grandmother would be so proud of you guys. You really are terrific. Thank you again for this honour. And I feel like a very lucky woman. And thank you, Tells, for giving so many women this opportunity.